Hello, David Attenborough here. Because you cunts are destroying the natural world, sometimes I like to disappear into a fantasy world. A D&D podcast. We are Infinite Deer. Find us on iTunes or any other podcast download platform. See you later. Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare for this backstage episode from our main house production. Uh, I'm joined around the table by Ellie. Hello. By Vicky. Hello. Alex. Hi there. And by Dave. Hello. Alex, was that? A, were you doing a voice? No, I wasn't. That, that, that would just emanated from the okay. back of my throat. I'm not sure. I need to readjust just, what's going on. Just so, so deep. Just so know. excited to be around a table. <laughs> uh, so in this backstage episode, we're going to learn a bit about how all of your characters are connected in this story. On your character sheets, uh, you have the, the final bit of the character sheets that we haven't filled in yet. You have a uh, an introductions and history section. Uh, with a number of relationships uh, as bullet points, and you're all going to go around and assign some of those relationships to the other characters. If everybody in Vigil, if everybody in Merely Role Players plays with everybody else in Vigil, we are going to run out of these. Uh, so feel free, uh, if you don't think any of the ones on the sheet fit one of the other people here, or uh, you immediately sort of think about that character and think, oh, well, our relationship would obviously be this, but it's not on the sheet, feel free to add new relationships and make stuff up. Oh, making <laughs> things up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's start with you, Ellie. Because you're a special case. I'm so special. <laughs> Thank you. Is everybody else Everybody else is coming up with uh, relationships that their character already has with the other people around the table. Mm. Um, whereas you are just arriving in this story in our first episode. So uh, for you, these are more aspirational, what we would like the relationship to be uh, in some cases. I think you have some that you could just use. Yeah. But they might be a bit different. Okay, I have my first one ready. Okay, talk to us about it. Well, it's the one at the top of the list, and it got me very excited. <laughs> it is. Oh, do you want me to tell you the person or who it, what it is first? Uh, tell us the relationship and then, then tell us the person. Okay, the relationship is, they are a distant descendant of your family mm. line. Oh, yes, nice. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. Yeah, 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 that's tidy. That's okay, tidy. and who have you got in mind? Uh, I would like that person to be Vicky's character. Yes. <laughs> ah, I knew something was calling me to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is very good. Yeah, this is very good. I think this it really links good. in with a lot of Vicky's stuff. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is very good. Yeah, it sounds like you're happy with that, Vicky. Yeah, but that's assu- assuming that's a thing that I my character does not know. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I don't know that either of us would necessarily know even know from the beginning, would we? No, don't, don't think we can so. discover that through play. I think that would be very yeah. cool for us, neither of us, to know. Yeah. 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 It's sort of like the the point of these is sort of to give your characters like a reason to be yeah. interacting. But mm. also if you think it's more exciting for it to be a mystery that gets revealed later then. Yeah, that's I mean fine. I definitely wouldn't know. Sure. Because how would I know? Of course. And I would maybe <laughs> only know if I'd done some kind of like family, family tree, tree yeah. investigation or something. Yeah. Yeah, if it came up in a background yeah. check. Yeah. Because yes. I'm not, a, I'm not, I can't be a direct, a direct, direct descendant. No, right? I didn't have any kids. Because you didn't have any children. No. So it's like, you know, it's not like, oh, that's my great grandmother. No. You know, <laughs> like it's going to be something. It's just from the family line. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. There's, there's Byron back in the family. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? So it could be something that you do have an inkling of like, oh, there's a family rumour that yeah, we're somehow yeah, yeah. related to the Byrons. Yeah. Cool. All right. So Renko is a distant descendant of Persephone Byron's uh, family line. So, uh, Vicky, do you want to do one, do a relationship back for Percy? I'm, I'm thinking that, so, so one of the relationships on my list 
well, there's two that are like, I feel like they're, they're, they're sort of similar but different. One is they're somehow tied into it all, so you've been keeping an eye on them. Uh-huh. And there's another one, which is the signs all pointed to working together, so you found them and now you work together. Okay. So I feel like when Percy arrives, yeah. for me, it's probably going to be one of those two motivations mm-hmm. because I would see it as my job to be like, okay, what's all this about? Let's figure this out and then as I realise that you are a, not a threat but an ally mm-hmm. it would probably end up being there's all these signs that we should work together yeah. and I would be re- recruiting you mm, to yeah. be a part of our group especially if we can't send you back or if that's not your desire to be sent back to your existing time so I think I'm going to go with that one the signs are pointed to working together so you found them and now you work together that sounds great so uh, Vicky do you want to do another relationship to one of the others and yeah. then we'll yeah I'm yeah, going to do uh, my relationship with Alex's character okay so with uh, Ranko's relationship with Graham Graham um, so I think this is going to be the other one wh- which I mentioned earlier which is they're somehow tied into it all and I've been keeping an eye on them oh, okay <laughs> so I think I've got my suspicions about Graham <laughs> yeah and and so I've I'm always just making sure that he's like in my sights so that you know if anything weird does happen I know like I'm trying to uncover that mystery somehow. So it's a sort of like keep it working together, but also like keep your friends close and your enemies close. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I mean, we do know because it is a an established fact about the summoned playbook that Graham is destined to bring about the apocalypse. Exactly. So this yeah. is very fair. Yeah. You might yeah. not know that exactly. I think that's it. I think but... that's what I'm thinking is that I don't know what it is, but there's something about Graham that makes me go. There's something else going. Like that's a part of my character is to be like suspicious and to be trying to connect the dots and just there will be things that I'm seeing. And I think the more time I spend with him, the more information I can gather without revealing to him that I'm, you know, deeply suspicious of everything he does. <laughs> Which is definitely the case, in case you didn't get that. Yeah. I'm perfectly normal. There's nothing weird about me. Normal human man Graham. Yes. I love the idea of you trying to be so normal that you just get things slightly weirdly wrong. Yes. Like, like mm, people wear hats, I shall wear this hat. And then it's like one of those ones that just has two cans yeah. of beers attached to the side yeah. and you're wearing it every day. And I feel like that's the kind of stuff that Renko considers to be a red flag, right? <laughs> Where she's like... Mm-mm. It was, it's that you have a, you have a, a hat, an incongruous hat that you don't wear on your head. Right? Yeah, yeah, I have a hat, but it's just always like, just by my side. Yeah. <laughs> It's attached to me, but I don't wear it as a hat. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And also Graham smokes, but you never see him light the cigarette. Yeah, um... see. This is stuff Renko would have noticed. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think you probably know as we start yeah. the story that Graham is not a human. Yes, right? yes. I'm just not quite sure how problematic yeah. that is. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly fine, you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah. No. Someone says on your t shirt. <laughs> I would say that's like Renko's trigger phrase. <laughs> I don't think so. A lot of people are asking questions about my I am not destined to cause the apocalypse t-shirt that are answered by my t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, guys, just trust the t-shirt. Trust There's nothing the wrong here. So uh, are you happy with that, Alex? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, that makes sense. Yeah. And what, what would you like your relationship or Graham's relationship with Renko to be uh, in the other direction? Well... I think I've found one that um, is quite amusing. You're suspicious about their motives. Oh. Basically, I, I don't like the way that you're really suspicious yeah. about me. <laughs> and I'm... Because I'm, I'm a bit oblivious to generally me being like a bit of a, a incongruous in the general sort of on the wrong of Sherry Down. So you being like really like aware of what I'm doing, I'm just a little bit like, why are you so concerned with yeah. me? I'm just doing last year's tax return. Can you can you let me get on with the books, please? That seems fair. Um, so yeah, I'm just suspicious of Vicky because I'm like, what? why is she so worried? Has she not seen my T-shirt? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't wear a t-shirt, by the way, but, you okay. know. But we, we get the idea. Yeah. yeah. The metaphorical t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, and would you like to assign another relationship to either uh, Dave's character, Mick, or Ellie's character, Percy? Definitely Dave's character, Mick. Um, it says here, romantic obsession on your part. I don't think it's a romantic <laughs> obsession. I oh, think why I'm not? Just... Why not? <laughs> because uh, no, I, I don't know. I, I, in my head, I was like, that doesn't feel. I just quite like the idea of me being obsessed with 
a normal man. Yes, right? yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So I'm, I'm, I treat him almost as if he were a pet. Right. Yeah. So I'm just obsessed with him and his his daily life and what he does. So I'm just kind of in awe of him. I'm like, you're such a normal this is man. Re- this is reminding me of um, Michael in the Good Place. You know where he's like <laughs> yeah. kind of obsessed, but again, yes. like, as, but humans are like pets to him. Yeah. yeah. I really, really like that. I, I'm yeah. getting images of of you to, uh, Graham like very performatively inviting Mick out f- for a, a normal pint at the pub yes and like you know being this slightly slightly sort of stuffy looking mm. character like very dapperly dressed but trying to perform like normal Sheridan bloke in the pub with Mick yeah, yeah. Uh, with my straw boater attached to my belt <laughs> yeah you know classic yeah I think that's brilliant so, Dave, are you happy with that? Uh, yeah, I don't mind being um, the object of somebody's obsession. That's fine. <laughs> what's the What's the full text of that relationship as written? Um, romantic obsession on your part. Ask them if they know about it and if they reciprocate it. <laughs> so, um, are you obsessed with me? I mean, I suppose that goes straight into my relationship with with Graham. So, I would say I'm not obsessed back. Okay. I think more suspicious because of their unnatural powers <laughs> kind of makes more sense for, for um, my feelings towards Graham. Poor Graham just cannot stop arousing people's suspicions. Well, I think it's... My literal presence is a concern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. Because, I mean, it's certainly out of the people who are around the table now, character-wise, you're definitely the most obviously yeah. not kind of... I suppose once once we get to know... Ellie's character a bit more that might change mm. but at the moment yeah you were the only truly supernatural one among us yes. yeah yeah. Um, and I think as a as a kind of normal person I'd, I'd be fairly suspicious yeah. so that one reads um, you're a bit suspicious of them maybe due to their unnatural powers or something like that <laughs> sounds about <laughs> right sounds about right <laughs> yeah. I mean the fact that if you don't look at me straight on you see sort of like a weird nebulous sort of like writhing in my form and then you look at me and it's completely normal yeah. so you're like <sighs> Yeah, and I think actually the suspicion is born out of your obsession as well. Is that it's a bit like, <laughs> what is going on here? Is he going to murder me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does he just? Does he really just want to pint down the pub, or does he want to wear my skin? Yeah, yeah. wear my skin was the exact phrase yeah, yeah. that came into my head. I had, I had wear me as a human suit as well. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You don't need a human suit. You already got one. Exactly. <laughs> where did don't, you get it? don't ask where he got it. <laughs> oh god. This kind of ties into Alex. Haven't you got a move uh, about like how unsettling you are and people don't trust you? Oh yeah, I literally can't. I can't make people um, like me. Um, <laughs> so and here we are. One of my moves is freakish. You're weird and people react badly. You it. can't use manipulate someone until you prove yourself to them first. I love and this it. includes the other hunters. <laughs> yeah. But what I like about this is it has so much potential, right? For like our relate like mm. we can have a relationship that grows where I can yeah. like learn to trust you or then yeah. you, you know, or you can prove yourself in some way. Like that has a lot of yeah. I yeah, can, story power. I can use manipulate someone on monsters that can reason and talk. But they always want something really bad. Of course they do. Of course they do. So this is actually another thing to decide right now is uh, for Mick, Percy and Renko, has Graham proved himself enough yet uh, when we start? Or is he going to have to do that in play? No, I'd quite like him to do that in play for my character, I think. Is that, was that in order to be able to manipulate us? Because yes. I don't want to be able to manipulate <laughs> <laughs> Why not, Dave? <laughs> What's your beef? <laughs> um, yeah, I think due to the suspicion, it would make sense that not not quite yeah. yet. Yeah, okay. this is a good like starting point yeah. and then it could evolve. Mm. That would be nice. I mean, that's absolutely fair. That's uh, Mick's relationship with Graham. Mm-hmm. Uh, what other relationships would you like to establish for Mick? Um, well, it's really tough to establish... With um, Ellie and yeah. the Percy character, what where you want it to end up is is kind of a tough one because a lot of them are like they rely on something having already happened. Right? Yeah. So like I, some of the ones I've got is you've saved their lives from a monster due to an unlikely chain of events, which would be nice if that's where it ends up. Right. But we but don't we know if that's going to happen in this yeah. in the in the play session. Yeah. So it might be it, we might have to make something up off script for for that. Yeah. Thing. I have a I have a pretty strong one for my relationship with Mick. Okay. So. It might you might want to leave mine until you've heard that. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, so I'll do um, Vicky's character Renko. I mean, I wonder if there's I've got one that's romantically involved, or you just have a crush on them. Ask them which they prefer. But I kind of my head went the other way. 
that <laughs> of course it did of course it did I was did. thinking about the episode of Community where Albert is being watched by the feds yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and she kind of starts obsessing it or like watches the same TV through the window <laughs> yeah 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 they and can't be together I kind she's... of imagine your character being kind of like that like being almost like you want to have a relationship but don't really can't yeah. act on it and don't want to do it was my thought but I know yeah. that, that kind of flips more, <laughs> it's more a relationship for you rather than for me <laughs> Um, but it, it could also work the other way that yeah. you know I could be obsessed I could be not obsessed that's what Alex is I could be <laughs> romantically interested my in you character. and I could just be constantly like not into it because you're too busy doing your work married to the job married to the yeah, job yeah exactly. married to the so job so I thought that kind yeah, of yeah, dynamic yeah. yeah I think that can work yeah um, but it's I mean, kind I'm, of up to you which way around you I mean we're only carrying your baby in real life Dave so. <laughs> well, yeah, <exactly. laughs> we got our first first merely role players player character on player character ship happen. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I don't mind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would you, works would you like me. me to be interested in you, or would you like to be interested in me? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it is. But it is both ways. But neither of us have admitted to it, and I am also like very much consider myself to be married to my job. Mm-hmm. So it's like I've not mm-hmm. even really entertained it. I yeah. love the idea of there being a will they won't they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuel yeah. the series. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's brilliant. Let's That's do good. it. I'm into Already. it. And, and also, there's no real emotional peril that where you could draw parallels from your own life because you are married and pregnant. Yes. So. <laughs> There's, there's no damage there was, a, there was a part of me that was like do I play Renko pregnant because <laughs> like yeah. Olivia Coleman in yeah. The Night Manager was mostly mm-hmm. what I was thinking of where I was just like I could be sat around the table like I'm already 21 weeks pregnant sat around the table and if I'm like sorry guys I've got to go and pee like, <laughs> it's just, just just play it in just play it in diegetic pregnancy peeing yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Make it as real as possible. No, I think that I, oh, I think that could really yeah. work. Actually, yeah, I cool. think that's I think that can really does work. Does that mean that does your relationship to me? Have you got one? That's well, there? I think I think it's like that's the kind of reciprocal part of your relationship yeah. with me. But there's a part of our relationship that could be like there's a there's a couple of options. But I'm wondering if. So there's one about like their old friends who originally met through a long chain of coincidences. Mm-hmm. And instead of thinking about it being like really old friends, I'm just wondering if it's like you're someone who would be known locally because you've I think you've lived here most of your life. Have you yeah. lived in the town most of your life? Mm-hmm. And I've been here for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. A few years, yeah. So chances are yeah. our paths have crossed in yeah. incredibly mundane ways. <laughs> like maybe you came and did some work on my house or something. But also if something strange has started happening to you, I might be I might be aware of that in some way or have done something about mm-hmm. that in some way. So I was wondering if it could be something a bit like that, but mm-hmm. it's mostly involved in like the wit, like I may be one of the only people that knows about whatever weird stuff you have that's unexplained Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. if you sort of knew knew each other have have known each other or been aware of each other for a few years then it would make sense if maybe you were the first person mick told that something he might also know i have the relevant expertise Mm -hmm. to be like this is a person i feel like i can trust and also is going to not be freaked out by this information given that in theory you see me as probably like a law enforcement professional but actually then i'm like Okay, I'm going to level with you. Here's this other stuff. It's like most people in town know that uh, Mick was found upside down and roundabout covered in runes. Mm. uh, Yeah. But not everybody knows that he also has super strength. Yeah. Mm. And like him, that that having happened would be something that would pique Renko's interest for certain. Mm. So I would definitely have like questioned you over it. And I do think like there's the likelihood that I'll keep turning up at things that you're doing and you'll be like why is this guy always involved in yeah. all this stuff so yeah. that's yeah. the sort of thing yeah. well, like following. That, that's how the relationship developed yeah. I mean, yeah. sort of as we as we start you you are like semi officially like have banded together yeah. and yeah, yeah. have been like okay yeah. Yeah. this yeah. this DO team has been pulled out we we are the only yeah. ones clued in in town we need to mm-hmm. do yeah. something about I, could, I like the idea of other people being like why is Mick here and I'm like yeah, it all makes <laughs> sense <laughs> like I'd really love someone to make like a mock up of the front page of the local paper <laughs> reporting yeah. these various weird things that have happened alongside like who's well, won the biggest marrow at the fate. Something yes. something that we have learned from Buffy the Vampire Slayer is it doesn't matter how many students and teachers at Sunnydale High, high get killed, it is always an animal attack. <laughs> like 
and no one comes and does anything about those wild animals that no. are killing literally hundreds of students. <laughs> and if something weird happens, it's a gas leak. Yeah, yeah. The, yes, yes. Every, if everyone loses their memory about what yeah. happened, gas. it's a gas leak. Yeah. yeah, they're obsessed. It's like, there's like a body count of like 16 students in season one. Really? And I'm just like, why is no one coming in to investigate? <laughs> I feel this? like if Mick's uh, accident up to upside down van and rooms thing was in the paper, it would have been placed alongside an ad for his business. Yeah, hundred yes. percent. Maybe with the van, like <laughs> just to try and get the like product placement yeah. of the number on the side of the van in shot yeah, or amazing. something. Ellie, let's come back to you. Yes, hello. Because I think you are. Everybody else has more relationships than you. So yes, far. Yes, yes. Um, so I've gone for a pretty wild card choice for Ooh. my relationship with Mick. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I think this has very good p- comedy potential. They were the first person to take you in, explain the modern world, and learn about your origins. Ooh, Brilliant. Okay. Ooh. Work out how you managed to communicate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think take you in necessarily means, like, I moved into your house. Although. But that could be the case. But I think that Mick would be a really good person to explain the modern world. So that obviously hasn't happened yet. No, that can be something that can happen in this in this adventure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Happy with that, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, does that help at all with the relationship in the other direction, Mick's relationship with Percy? I mean, there's one that's just good friends, and uh, mm. maybe by the end of telling them what's going on in in um, the world, we might end up good friends. And then there's they introduce you to the existence of monsters, but that's again kind of almost the opposite way round for what might happen. Yeah, and if yeah, how so much it, does Mick know at this point? Mick's clued in. He knows everything. Yeah. Right. yeah, I think I would have used it, it, cluing him in as a way of like helping him to understand what possibly could have happened to him, mm. which I'm assuming we still don't totally have answers no, for. No, no. Um, so that is still an open investigation in my case files. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you don't have answers yet. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. There's also... But initially... you better believe I'll be finding them out by spending some stuff. <laughs> We've got, um, there's one that's initially rivals. You both now respect each other's mm. talents. And whilst not rivals, you'll certainly be an, a burden <laughs> when you first arrive and don't know what's going on. So. Sure. I think there's an opportunity for, like, a buddy cop style, like, opposites. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, track a, situation. a sitcom type setup, yeah. isn't mm. it? So I think I mean we're laying for close friends by the end of yeah. end of the session, yeah. but I'm not promising anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. I think starting off as flatmates and going from there is a yeah. great idea. We can have we yeah we can have these as targets and we can we can revise at mm-hmm. the end of the session if we need to. Yeah. Have we just given our characters KPIs. Yeah. Is, that, is, yeah, is that what's yeah. happened? Here? Targets. Yeah. Oh, good grief. Yeah. So what's missing? We don't have uh, Percy and Graham. I've got a couple of possibilities. Do you have something that's jumping out at you, Alex? A couple, but again, it's all kind of where they could end up. Mm-hmm. Um, two that that jumped out were tied into your destiny somehow, and then also you met while separately hunting a monster, but you haven't arrived yet, so that <laughs> probably won't work. Depends what's happening when I arrive, I guess. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Are we if I arrive that? and immediately get attacked by a monster, <laughs> that you yeah. happen to also be hunting. I... Are you connected in your backstories already? No. No, not, not necessarily. All. Not necessarily. Not yeah, necessarily. not specifically. No. Yeah, there is there is a demonic being, or at, That's least, right. or at least one that has been surmised to be demonic in Percy's backstory. Uh, but that, you know, as we've established, not all demons know each other. No. <laughs> and not no. all of them are apocalyptic. No. No. <laughs> Tar them all with so, the same brush. I know it's one. terrible. <laughs> this yeah. one's definitely not apocalyptic in any way. The one I thought from my list that would be, be interesting um, and add some nuance to the situation would be they showed understanding when you were confused and overwhelmed. Because if your character was able to kind of show some support hmm. or uh, empathy when I arrive and I'm like overwhelmed by everything, hmm. then that's going to make it slightly more difficult for my character to just hate you mm. because mm. I think Percy would be predisposed to be like human good everything else bad mm. yes particularly demons yeah again so fair that would add a little bit more nuance to it that's interesting because one of my um, history is uh, seize your human side so that right. could be a, a moment where Graham shows some genuine sort of compassion understanding and goes ah because our experiences are not dissimilar no. we've both been ripped from our own time and yeah. origin to another yeah, place you have kind of without I'll say so. Yeah. Yeah, and you would both be, like, as disorientated. Mm. Like, you're trying to figure out this world. Yeah, because it would have been the same same way for him when he landed. Yeah. 
Maybe you also think that hats belong on belts. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> the Victorians weren't that different, I guess. But there were some very different fashion choices. Yeah, that's, that's true. Sure. That's true. They were really into hats. Maybe you're confused by the lack of hats, if anything. <laughs> yes. Everyone's being very rude. Everyone's as as got bare heads. And that's, and that's another reason everywhere. where you're like, oh, look, he's got a hat. He yeah. must be a standard guy, but also not. Wonderful. All right, that's all of them, right? Everyone's, yeah. Everyone's got three relationships. Yes. yes. Yeah. Excellent. Everybody happy with those? Yes. Yes, yes. I think there's potential in all of them. Mm. Uh, great. I believe that we are ready to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This has been Vigil, a main house production from Merely Role Players. It stars Dave as Mick, Vicky as Renko, Ellie Pitkin as Persephone Byron, and Alex Pankhurst as Graham. Sound design for this production is by Natalie Winter, and the theme music is by Alex Pankhurst. I'm Matt Boothman, and I play the supporting cast, as well as editing and producing this episode. We were playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat Productions. You can find Monster of the Week at genericgames.co.nz. Merely Role Players is a foggy outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on.